So I made a video last night before Bernie Sanders endorsed Hillary Clinton, and today a lot of people were howling. <clears throat> um, and uh, Cenk Uyghur had what he had to say, uh, which you should refer to, uh, which was that uh, more or less what I said last night, which is that they came to Bernie Sanders. They said, if you endorse us, uh, Clinton now, uh, you'll get the most favorable conditions for your hearing. And the longer you delay at this point, the less we will um, consider your positions. Uh, and um, this, we don't know to what degree the pressure was applied, but the one thing that I find quite shocking, as I noted last night, is that there was not a single mention of foreign policy uh, uh, as a minority report coming out of the platform committee. Uh, uh, as far as I understand it, this is absolutely vital that we get a minority report issued on foreign policy, uh, because as I noted last night, there's a uh, problem with Ukraine. Clinton is at the wrong policy on the Ukraine, which is leading towards uh, unnecessary conflict with Russia. Uh, Russia is a perfectly easy country to get along with as long as we're not running an imperialist uh, foreign policy. Uh, the U.S. can make plenty of money and do fine without trying to uh, dominate everyone else. We can compete uh, in normal uh, business terms. We don't have to use our uh, military bullying might to uh, uh, get access for global corporations. Uh, this is what Hillary Clinton appears to do there. I'm very concerned that uh, I'm, uh, right now the U.S. is uh, commandeering their Iran uh, missile shield and repurposing it towards Russia. Russia has only 4% or so of NATO's military budget. It's a $60 billion military budget. The U.S. is about, when all is really said and done, between 800 and 900 billion compared to other countries because we keep a lot of things off books. We have a bristling subsystem of intelligence agencies and homeland security and all this sort of thing, which tax on a couple hundred billion to it. Then you've got uh, Britain, Germany, France, uh, Italy, uh, Spain, Turkey. Uh, these are the, the countries in NATO. Um, uh, so uh, Russia can't possibly stand up to any of them, and this uh, missile shield uh, could potentially eliminate Russia's nuclear deterrent, which means that Russia uh, would have to launch a first strike or lose their entire uh, military uh, uh, viability. Um, it would eliminate the uh, uh, deterrence, the mutual assured destruction, would be destabilized as one side would be able to obtain a first strike over the other. So that's one issue. The other issue is her uh, track record on trying to push weapons into Syria, uh, causing severe uh, uh, bloodshed, and then the audacity to blame this on Assad. Assad is, uh, Sy Hirsch says Assad was not guilty of the Ghouta chemical attacks. It was most likely rebels smuggled in from Turkey. Uh, Turkey has uh, is paying an army in Syria to fight Assad, so they have to also be nice to ISIS because ISIS is fighting Assad. Uh, so for international uh, theater, they participate in bombing of ISIS, but in fact, ISIS and Erdogan both know that they dislike uh, Assad much more than they dislike each other. <clears throat> uh, so the question is... Um, uh, you know, why didn't any of these foreign policy issues come up? Will any of you listening, if you uh, are delegates or going to the convention, be able to address this issue of having a foreign policy of peace platform? Um, and uh, so at any rate, Bernie uh, will have many of his uh, ideas uh, supported by the Democratic Party as a result of his endorsement of Clinton, and that's uh, so on the inside, we have a track, the Bernie Sanders movement. The other track is on the outside. Uh, so for me personally, I cannot endorse Clinton until this issue of foreign policy is addressed. And there may be more issues I need to address. Uh, but certainly this one is a non-starter for me. So I'm suggesting <clears throat> that for people who uh, want to see a real change, at least in foreign policy, and then let's take a look again. 
uh, and plus some admission of the disaster in Libya and Clinton's personal responsibility in creating that disaster and an apology to the Libyan people. That's just for me. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, she's probably already apologized to Iraqi people, but she certainly should apologize to them as well. Uh, so, uh, but even if she didn't apologize to anybody, if it was strictly pragmatism, enemy of my enemy is my friend, we would need a definite concrete uh, platform that didn't involve CIA hijinks, destabilizing governments overseas, and uh, uh, drone wars and all of this nonsense. So. Uh, I will support uh, Jill Stein and Gary Johnson. So that sounds kind of odd. Uh, so both the uh, libertarian movement and the green movement, uh, for me, represent elements of Jeffersonian democracy uh, in terms of their common aspirations with my own. Um, so uh, I personally believe that work should be largely automated and eliminated. What we call work now should be more like uh, uh, avocation. So we might become scientists, researchers, scholars, poets, and of course, just to make sure everybody feels uh, like they're not just mooches, uh, we could put them all into systems. We call employment, give them little coupons, which we call money. So they have proceeds to the dividends of the, the community's harvest so to speak. Uh, but in the long term, we can largely automate work. And if the workers own, and not even the workers, the citizens own the robots, uh, the economy is essentially free. Uh, we don't have to work and we can obtain the results of an automated economy. Um, and if we don't deal with that, we're going to be slaves of a bunch of uh, corporations that own all the robots. So those are your two options from my point of view. And then I believe we need to devolve government down to the bioregion. And the bioregions should be autonomous. Bioregions should be able to produce their own uh, basic uh, sustenance. Uh, there should be smart factories. These, you know, you have these 3D printing machines now. So you, each bioregion should be able to produce what it needs by and large and trade with other bioregions for things it can't produce or specialties of the other bioregions. So you're going to have wine from California and France uh, and machine parts from Germany. Um, but by and large, uh, each bioregion should be able to be self sustaining and self governing. That's the model. Maybe it'll take 100 years to get there. So then you've got the green approach, which is communitarian approach, which accepts all the things I just said, potentially. However, of course, the thing about the Bernie Sanders progressive movement and the green movement is the implication that we might use a status structures to uh, provide health care and so forth. Uh, so I personally think that we should also have a opt uh, in or opt out modality here which is to say that if a bioregion is able to produce through non-coercive co-ops complete uh, 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 employment effectively, meaning complete provisioning of people. So there's seven basic industries we have. We have uh, the, in, we, we need to have uh, housing. So you need to have a housing co-op. You need to give access to land. You need to be able to control land prices from speculation. So you can do this in a, uh, uh, in, in a potentially in a, uh, in a private economy, in a, in a well-ordered, non-corrupt, non-extracted uh, society. The problem right now is we have this rent-seeking society where with these low interest rates, which means that the people at the top can buy out all the assets and then charge us rent for them. Water, light, air, everything can be bought out as contracts by the super wealthy and then leased back to us at a hefty interest rate. That's what a cell phone is. A cell phone is a bank purchase of spectrum that you are doing a sublease of and you're paying a hundred times the cost of the actual service of the network. Almost all your money is going into the rent seeking activity of having acquired and leased that spectrum license. So uh, you, you could use a co-op for providing housing uh, and you could volunteer part-time at the co-op in order to have your own housing contract uh, set up, including the land and 
Uh, I don't think people should have to pay any property tax in their primary domicile in an ideal society, but we have to guarantee all citizens have access to this uh, housing co-op or the housing uh, utility uh, from the, the region. Um, and this could be done just by buying a house. It doesn't have to be done by a co-op, but everyone should have access to this service of housing. And then the service that you need on top of that is you need uh, uh, food. So then you have an agricultural cooperative, a restaurant cooperative. You can buy food on the uh, in the in the market and the free market. Uh, go to restaurants, uh, but everyone should have uh, that uh, utility of being able to. Uh, have healthy uh, food, uh, largely. Uh, so uh, by organizing around farming cooperatives, you could provide that to everyone and not have to use taxation. Now, you use taxation to subsidize people who don't have these utilities, but your real goal is to get them into a portfolio of a total of seven cooperatives per person. Then you've got educa an education cooperative, which should be affiliated with a uh, a research university. Each bioregion should have at least one major research university. And that should be a magnet for all the schooling. Then there should be a transport system. The transport system uh, should be like a light rail grid, maybe, or the uh, Elon Musk's, uh, you know, pneumatic tubes. Uh, and, uh, and we should have uh, educational centers at each crossing of this light rail that are also uh, business centers or uh, kids should actually prototype. They shouldn't just do everything in theory, uh, writing a school newspaper, doing a school play. These are all things uh, being involved in uh, real farming because if in a community where you're trying to eliminate it work, eliminate want, the kids producing don't actually produce a negative impact on workers and employment because you're trying to eliminate employment by hooking people up to the utilities that they need. Uh, so then you've got, uh, 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 so you've dealt with education, there, uh, uh, and so the idea is you have a hybrid society, well, okay, health, education. Uh, healthcare is clearly part of uh, another, one of these seven cooperatives. Then you have some kind of a, 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 a transport, uh, co that's a little bit of a, a, a hairier subject, the transport cooperative. But what I figured out is um, that we can create these bioregional cooperatives to provide what the basics that people need, and that this could be a way to have a, a non-coercive structure. So the Gary Johnson Libertarians think that we should simply make uh, our society fair enough and free enough that free people competing honestly can lower cost and improve quality of goods and services. And, I, uh, and th their concern is that excessive regulation uh, is usually becomes captive, but I don't see any argument with the idea of free and fair uh, uh, competition to lower prices and improve quality have any contradiction with good regulation. It seems like good regulation would be vital for that. And that's a question I would have to ask the libertarians is, what do we do about concentration of power and concentration of wealth and the advantages that produces? How do we keep that from occurring? Uh, but uh, the libertarian approach is to, to make things affordable enough and the economy vibrant enough that people can find the jobs to buy the services and that a lot of our problems are essentially people gaming the system, whether it's in uh, uh, the way the stock market benefits uh, the big companies and the big interests, or uh, uh, the way this is accumulated and leased back to us in the case of TV and internet and uh, uh, virtually everything. Um, so, uh, so there's two options. One is to through the free and fair forces of the market, be able to pr provide opportunity and high quality products with lowered prices through competition. And on the other hand, there's the idea of providing these services universally through taxation. And then the third way is to provide a system of cooperatives that can be supported at community levels that can shut taxation off. Now, if we try to devolve most of our responsibilities down to the bioregion to reduce our needing to slave away to support people living in Washington, uh, for example, uh, we need to try to work to a world uh, without armaments because 
armaments, do you really want to spend one-fifth of your time working to make armaments? That's what you're doing right now in our economy. One-fifth of your time is spent to support armaments, production and speculation and utilization worldwide in one fashion or another. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's probably more than half of your taxes. <clears throat> So Bernie Sanders did what he did. I uh, think that uh, what we do with Jill Stein and, and, and Gary Johnson is we have Johnson. Now, this is uh, probably not going to be easy to pull off, but essentially you would have the Libertarian Party be allocated certain states to run in exclusively, and the Greens would agree to vote for the Libertarians there, and the Libertarians would vote for the Greens here. Uh, the problem is, of course, this is all Big Bang once, uh, one, it's, uh, all in one day. There's no state-by-state -state aspect. But the way we could do this is we could have online uh, uh, sign-in, like uh, Facebook. You like the page for Gary Johnson and Jill Stein Coalition, and you get uh, 50 million signatures, and uh, you, uh, if those people actually can get out and vote, uh, you've won the election. But the point is that we don't even have to win the election. If we can win some states, if Jill Stein could win California, which is not inconceivable if the Libertarians ask their supporters to vote for her here in a, in a, a coalition where we seek to pick up states uh, for the Libertarians in certain areas and for the Greens and others, and they agree to a power sharing agreement where they pool their electors, uh, which is technically frowned upon, but it's not illegal. Uh, so that's my crazy idea for tonight. My name is Alexander Hagen. Uh, and give it some thought. We, ha we, we have a problem with our constitution, our election system, so we have to think like lawyers. We have to be able to take advantage of the problems with it and not simply suffer from them. Of course, this all gets to the issue of the elections and their veracity, and that's why I say we need to move to an online election system run by citizens that then should be reflected by everyone uh, bringing home their ballot receipt or whatever they can get and entering it next to their name where they claim they were endorsing someone. We need to, unfortunately, uh, do this. And uh, if we could get three million Ber Bernie volunteers to coordinate a hundred people each, that would be 300 million people they could coordinate. So it's not impossible for us to do this. Okay, my name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.